discussion for this conference. And the topic is building data products and services. Our guests will be Mr. Davor Rune, President of Board at SISEX. I, I hope I said it right, C-I-S-E-X. Mrs. Maya Vekic-Vedrina, Director of DWHBI and Analytics at, at Atlantic Grupa. Mrs. Mila Felicic uh, Velimirovic uh, from Hrvatski Telekom. And Mrs. Angela Chulibrk, Product Manager and Think Solver with whom we will talk about building data products and services. And our moderator for the panel is going to be Aleksandar Linz Georgievich, who you already had the chance to meet before. Okay, I will now uh, give the words to Alexander and the panelists. We will see some video and then Alexander will take the floor. Enjoy. Thank you uh, for coming back after the lava lunch. I hope that you had a time to replenish yourself and to enjoy the festivity. Uh, for sure, I know that I have been <laughs> enjoying the burger. I don't know what you did you choose, but I totally encourage you to try some other things tomorrow as well. Uh, we are continuing with the program. Uh, today, uh, we are having a panel that, which is uh, titled uh, Building data, uh, data Products and Services. Uh, we are having this uh, panel because I we truly do believe that it's important to talk about this topic. We all know the statistics say that most of the projects developed in data science or data as well, they don't end up in being like, they don't, uh, end up like finished because there's a lot of things, a lot of moving things. It's not completely the same as the IT and software industry. It has its own, its own uh, differences and also similarities as well. But I think that it's important to have somebody who has a vast experience to talk and share their knowledge about this topic and to give us some insight that may be helpful tomorrow when we work in our company to develop a data product and service on our own and to maybe use some knowledge, uh, gather knowledge to improve the, the score. Uh, today with us, as my dear colleague Andriana said, we have uh, four panelists with a broad experience. Uh, first uh, panelist is Madame Smina plesic uh, who is uh, Director of the Customer Value Management Department at Hrvatski Telekom. Uh, the second panelist is Maja vekic uh, who is Director of uh, Data Warehouse and Business Intelligence uh, and Analytics at the Atlantic Group. Uh, the third uh, panelist is Angela Tulibrook. Uh, she is uh, the Product Manager Team Solar and last but not the least, our panelist is going to is Dalla Rune, president of board at SISEX and co-founder and CTO at IAT. Uh, I would just maybe as a instead of doing like the introduction about yourself, maybe we can do also just a small a small round of like one minute, maybe not more. What is your connection, what is your experience in building uh, data product and services? We can we can start with you and after that uh, Maya and after that we can continue with Simina. So, uh, my connection with uh, building data products and services is actually is direct connection. This is what I do my whole life. So, my, uh, I started my career actually in uh, Telco, 
uh, industry. Uh, I spent uh, 15 years in uh, telecom, in Timoga, Timoga, Croatia, Croatian Telecom. Actually, I was uh, working with Mida and know, know her for many years. Um, and um, I was always part of uh, IT organization. My background is in IT. And always I was somehow uh, on the path of developing um, uh, IT systems who support delivery of data products and services and actually always building these uh, data products and services for internal use. So this is what we are, what I was doing my whole, whole career. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's it. This is, I, shortly if I have to, maybe I will use uh, this this sentence. If I have to uh, tell what I do in three words, I would say that I, I'm building data products and services for internal use. Yes. Okay. Thanks. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, Smiga. Yeah, I'm from Croatian Telecom, uh, Spain. Actually, my whole career in Croatian Telecom, but uh, for on both sides. I started as IT developer actually Oracle databases many years ago together with Maya. We were building uh, data products uh, and services at that time, but then I moved to the other side, so actually to marketing <coughs> department, uh, where when I led a uh, few departments, mainly that were developing uh, marketing products, data products, uh, especially related to fixed product lines, but always relying on uh, data analytics and data products uh, that actually were giving a uh, sense of uh, where the products, uh, marketing products should uh, end up. Uh, last five years, I'm head of uh, customer value management department that actually is developing this uh, way of uh, de deploying uh, data products that have a real, not only marketing purpose, but actually company purpose that, uh, that we aim to drive company to be more data driven, to actually really, uh, bring uh, decisions based on these products and uh, to uh, ensure that all the products, uh, marketing products and telco products working uh, properly but based on data that uh, we are gaining and uh, analyzing. Okay, uh, Smita, thank you very much. Angela? Yeah, hello everyone, uh, my name is Angela and I work as a product manager in Team Solar. Uh, Team Solar is building a product that is relying on data and it makes, uh, um, it helps uh, clients to understand their customers based on the data and it helps uh, raise the revenues and sales and their conversion rates in marketing campaigns uh, based on insights from, from the data. So this product couldn't, couldn't work uh, uh, without data. Prior to this I was working as a data scientist in the same company so always was uh, data. Prior to that, <laughs> if, it's, <laughs> if it's interesting, I was working as a financial analyst, so data again, but figures, yeah. Okay, now we're... Yeah. Uh, hi everybody. Um, so I have like a life philosophy to change. Uh, feels like every seven years or so, so um, this is one of my latest uh, careers. The first one was building MD3 engines, if somebody remember those old times. Uh, then I was doing some uh, high performance computing research at Microsoft Research at Redmond. Then I came back to Croatia building uh, different kind of digital products as a digital agency. And this last uh, company, Ert, uh, is uh, actually trying to bring this deep learning technology into the business cases with as least amount of uh, friction as possible to people that are not necessarily data scientists. So I have some data experience, but not that much, I guess. Okay, thank you so much. So basically, uh, after this round of questions, because what I wanted to say is uh, I would like to talk a little bit more about the importance of data. I think it's uh, and uh, basically this conference at the Lincoln of Data and Business Society. Of course, we are talking about AI as well, but the data is on the first place. Uh, because all of you, uh, you all work in your conference organization to prove businesses and that they offer to the market customers, basically this is based on data. And I think, like I said, it's important to talk about it. Uh, I would like to start Maya with you, perhaps, and to ask you uh, how important are the data you have and uh, what can be obtained from their analysis, interpretation and prediction. Mm, also, is it a false statement to say that data will be the driving force behind decision making almost every organization in the future? Yeah, I think that uh, in, in, in 
this profession, in this lineup, is actually everything. So without data, we can't do nothing, actually. So everything starts with data, with identification, uh, what we need, with collection, with taking care about data, about taking care about data quality. I think that, you know, when we are talking about uh, data science, this is maybe the um, exciting part, you know, how to use the data, but without this uh, difficult task at the beginning to, to collect it, organize it, store it, and govern it, uh, we can't do much uh, after that. So I think the data is really uh, extremely important, and I can maybe share some experience and some views on data uh, based on my uh, experiences. So I said that I uh, used to work in, in telco industry, now I'm in Atlantic Grupa, which is in FMCG industry, and I think it's very important, you know, and different um, based on industry, based on a specific company, how you approach the data. For example, in telco, I think telco uh, bank, banks and similar companies are blessed because they somehow control whole data chain from service, they know who is a uh, customer, they know how the customer is using the service, uh, based on, they know usage patterns, based on usage they can create new products, they have direct link and direct access to communicate. With, with customers. So uh, I think, for example, Telco is blessed in that area and I became aware of that after I switched to FMCG industry, uh, as I said, in Atlantic Group. Atlantic Group I, uh, is manufacturer, distributor, and also retailer. So we have three different business models. And when you uh, switch to different industry, you see that actually you don't control whole data chain and you have some, some challenges. Uh, because of that. So, for example, if you, if you uh, take an example of some company, you, you know uh, everything, you know, you know what you produce, um, you control the data until your goods uh, leave uh, your company. But after that, you have no idea who, who exactly is your consumer. We don't know which of us actually uh, uh, bought the product. So these are the challenges where you have to somehow find a way how to fill, fill the gap. And uh, you asked also, is it bold to say that the data uh, is somehow part of every decision? Uh, I think it's not bold. Um, I think even the companies who think they are not making decisions based on data are actually based on data. Some are more data-driven, some less, but I think there is no company who doesn't use the data for making decisions. And I also think what's important, you know, if you think about uh, data-driven decision, maybe somebody thinks that, you know, you should take a look into, I don't know, various sheets, spreadsheets, tables, you know, crunching numbers. But I think that, that, that the art and the whole point is somehow to to, to, to collect the data, to, to transform it, and to present it in a meaningful way, easy, which is easy to use. So I think decision, uh, making decisions based on data is easier when the data is presented. Okay, yeah, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is very interesting. I think that that saying that uh, maybe if we even we don't know we are using data, we are using data. That's, yes, yes, that's also exactly. data about mm -hmm. that information about something. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, Smith, I have a question for you. Uh, why? Is, uh, such as Croatian Telecom need the data. Uh, can you get from the, them and how valuable they are for, for your business model, actually? Okay, so um, as Maya said, uh, companies like Croatian Telecom or any bank or some similar industries are actually sitting on a tremendous amount of data and it looks that uh, we know everything and that actually everything is collected uh, in, the, in our data, which is of course, because of the, all the systems are actually creating a huge amount of data. Why we need it? Uh, we need it uh, to track some obvious things, like uh, I'd say some business as usual things, of course, to track, monitor all the systems, networks, performance, uh, uh, any uh, service delivery performance, uh, to predict uh, some uh, issues that might happen in the network. Uh, but also 
the, our responsibilities to actually understand the full chain, or as Maya said, actually the whole, after all, customer journey to understand what is happening uh, actually, end customer, end user, uh, why this is happening to him, and what we have to do in order to prevent either some problem or even, or even to for, uh, foster some positive things that uh, might uh, might end up in the end, uh, end on end customer. Um, so I would say that uh, the whole use of data is not just use of data, it's actually applying uh, products in everyday business and in any, in every actually sequence of the, of our business uh, units or any kind of processes. So it's not uh, just crunching data, analyzing, it's also implementing the whole uh, end-to-end process to, uh, to be completely relying on the, on the data that uh, we are producing and uh, processing. I think it's very interesting because when I talk to people from Talco, they have like almost as one, they are saying one, 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 let's say buzzword, this end-to-end -end product, like regarding the regarding data. So basically what is very interesting also, I don't know how many of you are maybe from Telco or not, but there is very uh, rare uh, situation that you can see that uh, data science AI team are uh, not working together inside the same team uh, as software engineers as well because uh, to, to the product in the end, the, the, it's very, very, because all of the data, that you don't have a problem with data, so basically you just need to go out there and build the whole product and when we're talking about the product, they need to have involved software engineering part as well because somebody needs to use it and we need to talk also about uh, design, etc., user, user experience, user interface, so it's very interesting have this kind of talk and to hear all the time the same the same stuff and maybe that, that can be a cool let's say one of the things already mentioned end-to-end -end products being said that Dawi, you are uh, you have been a serial entrepreneur and have a vast knowledge on how to incorporate data uh, uh, in the products for almost I think 25 years if I'm correct if I'm wrong five years more or less I'm not sure but I think that it's 25 years uh, how much has the data awareness changed over the previous years? I think that you maybe be the, the, the best one that we can ask this question. And also, do you think that we are ready to become a data-driven society? It's, it's, it's much wider I think, phenomenon than just data science world. So, um, so I, I started my first company in 97, it's almost 25 years ago. Um, and, uh, Past 25 years was pretty much dominated by new communication capabilities. So we went from the modems to bigger, faster, 2Gs, 3Gs, 5Gs, whatever Gs we have. And right now everything is so fast that actually I have a 3, 5G phone difference anymore. Because we are like reaching the plateau where we don't know what to do with this excessive bandwidth latency and so on. Um, Ten years ago in the research basically started a new revolution which is just coming to industry right now. So uh, this whole uh, disruption created by, by deep learning is slowly entering like every part of society. And I think like the past 25 years or so we were dominated by internet and, and trying to get everything online. Uh, the next 25 years I think is going to be dominated by now everything is online, everything is generating a lot of data, let's be smarter about what we do. So I think it's not just, it's, it's much wider thing. It's like really a societal shift, not just even in computer science, because the internet made a lot of consequences for the society in general, not just this, but society in general. And I think the same thing will happen now with the data. Now, now the data is new internet. Like it was, like what, what internet was 25 years ago, and all this thing that has to happen in the next 25 will be mostly data driven. Uh, either data or algorithmic, or, but it will be more focused on like what do we do with all this new information that we generate on, online, then how to be faster and online. Because that's pretty much I think reached the plateau where we don't really care that much about it. Okay, yeah, th that's very very interesting thought. Uh, Angela, what I'd like to uh, tackle uh, is the importance of data from a different perspective, and that is also technology. But let's say. Uh, uh, how challenging may it be for the organization to use their own data? And uh, why is this an important factor when we talk about incorporating data in the processes, decision and building services for end users? Um, well, I would like to quote uh, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, like I did uh, three years ago at Data Science Serbia conference, Belgrade conference, 
Uh, he said, when it's raining gold, uh, bring a bucket. Um, in, in this case, gold is data. And uh, I would say that it's not time for umbrellas, neither it's time for uh, picking the data with teaspoons. It is really time to, to bring a bucket, to, to reach for a bucket on Google Cloud or any other cloud uh, storage, because um, it is very cheap now. It is close to zero when Tower started. Uh, his business in the 90s, it was probably 100 times uh, more expensive. expensive. So um, uh, today, for example, when you have uh, like millions of, of I, I, I would say millions of records, uh, uh, transactions uh, a day, uh, it's, it's around um, uh, 100 megabytes. So for a year, you can, uh, you can have, for example, one gigabyte uh, um, on, on a storage which, which costs um, uh, less than one dollar. So the price is very cheap, so technology-wise uh, technology it's not that challenging, but I would say that it's challenging in terms of processes. Um, who to store the data, who to use data, which data, what to do with it, uh, that is challenging. Um, uh, but fortunately, there are companies like, like, uh, like Team Solver that, that uh, solve it, these problems. But I would also like to say that nowadays um, uh, our clients are collecting data uh, they don't need because if you collect like three years of data, that's enough to do some uh, um, some analysis, which is very valuable that, that could give you insights. And our clients are data uh, they don't need and they think that they would need in future. Um, for example, probably Hrvatski Tele Telecom is collecting data that they don't need at this moment, but maybe uh, they'll need it in future, or they would use it for data monetization. Maybe they will sell it to, to Atlantic Group. Um, so, um, yeah, technology-wise, it's not that, not that uh, challenging. And why important? Well, probably all in this, um, uh, on this conference know that data is important. Um, but I will tackle just one segment of our product, which are um, recommendations that we create for um, the client's customers. Um, so before, you would have a brick and mortar shops, and uh, our clients uh, must re rely on their sellers, uh, their cashiers, to, on their memory, on their intelligence, on their um, effort and willingness to recommend some products to, to their customers. And now you have uh, e-commerce or even online online solutions. Uh, you have even brick and mortar shops that can rely on data and that can make recommendations to their clients, to their customers um, that are driven, uh, data driven. So um, that's why it is important. It um, it can it can have mind of like hundreds of sellers. It can have their memory, their intelligence and it could give good recommendations to customers and um, um, it could improve customer experience and of course raise revenues and... Yeah, I totally on. agree. And basically what we are talking, what you are talking basically is not only like just uh, this blindly talk with technology but uh, help with the tool, you help us in the processes. Okay, something is burning, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the thing is, uh, what I wanted to add is that uh, I totally do agree. In the end, yes, content is the king, but sometimes content needs to be found by the customers. If you have a good content and customers cannot find it, then it doesn't matter like how good the content is. Basically, I think that what we are talking right now also that we are building data and AI products is about uh, not only uh, not only having having both key end to end uh, product like as technology, but also like something that's already existing to uh, to infuse it together with technology. And that's to create the, the, the win-win situation. Uh, being said that, and when we started about talking about building data products and services, uh, Dow, you also have a robust experience, not only as an entrepreneur, but also as a startup mentor. So basically, uh, how hard may it be for startups uh, to build their own product service based on data? And maybe in your opinion, what are the one, maybe three, Five, whatever you think that can be. I think that we can go up to ten, maybe to fifteen, if you have time. But what do you think they are the most common mistakes or obstacles the organization can make while building the product, and how to avoid them? What is your tip and tricks for that? That that thing is kind of timeless. I mean, uh, the product is a product, so 
you need to iterate fast. You need to go to the market as soon as you, you need to test your assumptions. I mean, I could tell you all those things talking about MP3s or high performance computing or data processing or whatever. It's really, uh, this, this data scale is quite old actually, and it's been around for a long time. So, um, but I found, like, in, in practice, the, the, the most successful stories were always uh, stories that were between, I don't know, like two different technologies. For example, uh, if you want to make advance in AI, machine learning, and data science, whatever, it's very, very difficult because the field is well known, a lot of people working on it. But if you want to improve, I don't know, use of AI in particular kind of healthcare, patient is usually like one to two. And then you can do miracles. If you, uh, and if you look like the really successful story, there's always a combination of having somebody who's good with the technology, but also somebody who's actually a domain expert, somebody who, who has like a longer vision of what they want to achieve and they use technology to get there. Uh, purely technological companies are extremely difficult. I mean, I found a couple of them, so I know it's like really hard business and it's very easy to burn them to the ground. Did a couple of times, was successful enough. But uh, uh, where you should be looking for um, success is usually by saying, oh, I've seen something working quite well and something similar, let me find a new application and you know, mentoring. These are like the things that are usually the most successful ones. They, they typically don't come from like IT background, but have some like, really good domain knowledge and then they found some co-founder that actually put in delivering that thing. That's, uh, that was, I think, uh, any combination so far in the things that I've seen as a mentor. I think that uh, what you mentioned is multidisciplinary team. That's something that I, I, I this is something that I stress out. Uh, I would like to stress out the multidisciplinary teams are something that is very hot topic right now. It's not only about data science and AI building the products like it's to together with I don't know so sociologists, psychologists, marketing experts, domain experts as you said. When you put it together on the same same ver vertical, same like the same same like of uh, decision making, same level, founders level, the success rate has shown it to be like five to six times much greater, like in building products because the the, the the wide network of knowledge that can be infused in that product in the end. Okay, somebody need to code it in the end, but the vast knowledge is really really doing something. Second thing you said about iteration is also very very interesting uh, and thing that. We all the time talk about it's iterations important, iterations important, but still, I think there is a lot of companies who are doing data science at a very high level. They still don't don't have like that capacity, but don't have like uh, the maybe knowledge of the good word to do that uh, iterative process, like on some uh, let's say something that is not ad hoc from project to project, but to, to to make it in some kind of methodology. Maybe it's that something can be infused for the data science AI in the future. Uh, to continue in, uh, in this manner, uh, I would like also to, to ask Maya, uh, what do you think, what are the pre uh, prerequisites uh, uh, that company needs to make uh, uh, so they can build an effective data product, improve its business? And uh, how hard it may be to create a balance between everyday support of the business, which is very, very important, and also something to create some new solution that maybe in the future, in six months, one year, maybe even eighteen months, can bring much more value to the to the company itself. Yeah, so I think that first company decides. So I'm always talking from this internal perspective, building pro uh, product for internal uh, use. So if company decides to go to, to 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 go there, actually, I think it should be really decision and determination because it's not easy. It's diff It's fun, but it's difficult. So I think maybe three major, I think, ingredients. What you need are definitely data. We have been talking about it. Without it uh, and collecting it, taking care of it, uh, we cannot uh, achieve much. Uh, the other thing I think very important is uh, building teams. So you have to build uh, teams, uh, obviously, IT teams, data engineers, uh, uh, business intelligence experts, uh, data scientists, all different profiles. But also you have to build, uh, in our case, key user community. So again, we, we were talking about uh, people from, from different disciplines, actually to, to bring on board internal users, key users who will use and exploit uh, 
uh, exploit the data and exploit this uh, data product. So I think building competencies and building knowledge and this, uh, this, this internal team, I think it is crucial. Uh, obviously you need some technology, but I think this is the least of, of the problems and, and let's say challenges you are, you are facing. And uh, I think you, you said, you know, what, what is needed to, to achieve successful uh, data product. I think at the end, the, in our case, internal user is uh, actually somehow deciding is it useful or not, you know. By using it, your By data. using it, by uh, adoption, or it, it is just, you know, we trying to, 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 to you know, to, pro to provide something. So in our case, if we are able to provide insights, for example, in product profitability, if we are able to, to, to give recommendation, you know, where to put specific product in warehouse to achieve maximum of e efficiency. If we, I don't know, implement chatbot to again increase efficiency and somehow uh, streamline some, some internal uh, processes if we give insights into uh, marketing mix model modeling, in which campaigns to invest, in which uh, types of promotions to invest. So if we are successful in giving and providing all these insights, I think that, that uh, adoption is there and the data product will be used. And so somehow then it won't be challenged, you know, if it's really part really part of the organization is it, is it used. And you, you ask, you know, this somehow split between day-to-day day -day support and building the product. Um, the strategy we somehow try to implement is to base our, um, our uh, products, internal products, data products, based on self-service. So again, these key users I was talking about from different uh, parts of the business, they play a really important and key role because we as IT organization provide capabilities, provide enablers, and they are key users who will actually exploit the, 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 the data and uh, reach the insight. So I think in that, uh, in that model, then this day-to-day -day support somehow, it, it is not so much focused on IT organization and you are focused on building the product. So, so this is the way how we are trying to, 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 to approach. Yeah, I think this is a very interesting uh, point of view because it's uh, going from internal. And sometimes people do, do tend to, to, to like put it aside like as a, as a, as a, as a less concerning to, uh, to, to deliver something internally than externally. Mm -hmm. I think that both are, so have some, 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 let's say, uh, some of the uh, good and bad sides like when we are talking about in terms of uh, risk. Uh, uh, of when we are doing this and every kind of business and kind of ventures, some kind of risk for sure. Uh, one of the key points you said, and I'm very uh, like that, if something is used or not is the best measurement of how successful a basic product is. And I know that many of my colleagues, because I'm also data scientist by vocation, we tend to have that, uh, that approach that we get, uh, let's say, even angry when somebody is not using our product. But I think that we maybe miss chance to ask ourselves why are people not using our products. Maybe it's not intuitive enough. Maybe the model behind is excellent, but one point, one button is not on the good place, so nobody will use it and nobody will see like what we are building to them or not including their report. So basically I think that uh, we as a profession or professionals in one place, on the second level as a, as a business business like decision makers, we need to have maybe and we talk about that clear communication regarding true communication to see where we are going. Also, I would like, and I think this is going to be a good question because we are talking externally right now. Angela, uh, when we talk about data science and AI, uh, two approaches. One is creating models, like solving some problems, uh, or something like that for the clients, and the second is building servicing products. It's very rare to see that we, we have the both sides developing inside of the same country, uh, country sorry, the same company at the same moment. So my question is for you, how hard may it be to try to achieve both sides. I know that things already did that. And second one, in your experience, what are the main differences in these two approaches? Uh, and do, can we use know-how from both of the sides to create something that is unique on the end and to have some added value maybe that we couldn't have just by approaching the, the first or the second case? Yeah, well, that's a very clever question. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I would say that uh, how we started, we started by just solving, solving problems uh, for our clients. And um, we kept on doing that because um, uh, a part that we have a no bullshit approach, but really um, we uh, are making products that are solving uh, problems. And I'm, I'm underlying a very important point that it has to be measured um, and it has to have uh, added value. So that added value has to be measured, presented to, to our clients. And uh, out of it, we managed to, 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 make, a, to make a product. Uh, so, um, but I would like also to add uh, something that like, uh, when, when we started solving problems, like for example, take churn. And when you start solving churn problem, um, then you see that, for example, that client doesn't have AI segmentation because uh, you have to know um, about customer segments when you want to understand why they're churning. Um, and for example, they, they manually make segments and they have like fixed measures, measures for, for clusters. So uh, we propose to have AI segmentation and they accept. And then other uh, clients see that the, that segmentation is good, so they want also AI segmentation. So uh, besides solving just products, it, it is important to educate your customers and to learn from them, of course, uh, and to uh, a need on the market, actually to create a small demand for, for something else that also gives, uh, gives value. Um, so I would say if, if, if I can answer, of course, that it, it's a mix of uh, solving problems and creating a need. Okay, uh, yeah, of course, you said, and, and of course, there is, uh, of course, the financing is also one important topic we, are, we didn't discuss here because in the end, something yeah. needs to be financed. And that is, let's say, inter for my next question for Spina for you is uh, what is the value of building an effective data product in one organization in terms of different, different aspects, of course, and how important is the culture of the organization and communication between different silos in the same? Uh, and last but not the least, as I mentioned before, how challenging can it be to get the funding inside of the company? Sometimes we do can't forget that we need to get approval. Here in the company has the money, we need to get approval for internally building some products. Um, yeah. I would say that uh, you partially all answered already two questions, uh, especially now about this, uh, how to finance the product. Uh, so the product has to have, uh, like any other pro product, uh, purpose and uh, presenting, like Angela also said, uh, people that will uh, drink. But how to how to present this value is actually now we are going to be silences and maybe to this end to end what you mentioned. But this in, in such huge companies probably this end to end uh, the word is something that uh, is <laughs> something that is in us that uh, we see this as uh, the whole uh, all the silos that should put, put people together. But actually from the customer perspective. It is really end-to-end -end process. So from the customer journey perspective, it starts somewhere, customers is using it, and we see all, all, everything in the, in the data and we understand the whole customer journey based on product. But how to create the product is actually the question, uh, what is the needs? Like any other, as I said, from marketing perspective, uh, you are starting with uh, market needs, uh, understanding uh, uh, whether we do have uh, such uh, um, data or any other uh, product that uh, can fulfill that need and how we will uh, develop it. Uh, so when we talk about customer journey improvement or NPS prediction model or uh, uh, churn model that you just uh, also Angela mentioned or um, any other model actually uh, we have to understand what are the issues. That's why I also mentioned sociology, psychology, smart that actually we have to ask also sometimes customers what is the something that is bothering them for customer experience and then to try to find that in the data. So maybe not always starting from the data because also what you just said that we have a tremendous amount of data. Some of the, these things are useful, some things are not useful if we don't understand how to use it. So how to transform it into a meaningful and useful way. And uh, when you collect, when you start with a project uh, that is building data product, you have to have all these components together. So the main experts, uh, uh, market researcher, uh, marketing uh, managers, uh, 
course, they are scientists, they are analytics team, IT support, but uh, just to start with the big picture, what we want to achieve, where we want to uh, uh, come, and then to start a little bit step by step. So not to start immediately uh, uh, with the huge projects, because then sometimes this uh, value is not visible immediately. But the value can be visible even with some entities, uh, with some uh, smaller uh, segments of this uh, end goal, what we want to achieve. So actually, this, I think, is answering to how this is started. And then the finances is come, the financing or support from stakeholders is coming just from these first visible results and with measurable KPIs that are really, can be set up uh, uh, really, uh, very, very clearly and properly. And then the whole puzzle is just then going I think oh, that, that's an excellent point to we'll create uh, some kind of results, short results after that, get bigger farming. That, that, that can be a good approach, not only. And that's some approach I think that for these kind of uh, expensive projects needs to be because uh, not all of us, especially if I imagine, not necessarily all the time, but understand the whole aspect of technology for them. Even if it's explainable, it's still uh, basically that, that's excellent. Okay. Uh, Almost here and at the end of the, the, the panel discussion, this like went very. I was thinking that we just started one minute ago because it was very interesting. But I would like to get, give you all all a chance to you know, have some kind of conclusion. Uh, and uh, my question to you: Would you like to add something to, to what we already mentioned? And if not, maybe what would be your message for small, medium, or large, or whatever of organization who would like to create? their own data product or service and maybe we can now start with Davar and after that Mana could just go in that line. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, well, <coughs> I'll be quick. Uh, it's very early in the game, I would say. So we are, we are working for 20, 20 years. Uh, like that was, uh, it's a time of uh, low hanging fruits. So I mean, whatever you do, pretty much will be successful regardless of the strategy because, well, it's, it's, it's easy to do. Uh, that's one way of looking at things. Another thing is to try to look how the things will develop in the next 10, 20 years. And this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting because it's more also like a, a social environment, uh, how the business is developing, uh, what happens when the industry gets more mature and, more, uh, and so on. And uh, there are a couple of strategies then. First, they want to like uh, have some kind of a startup that will be leader of the niche. So it's a different strategy than if you're trying uh, to do some consulting companies. Um, success of IT in Croatia in the region was basically built on, on services, uh, which is not really possible, I think, anymore, because with remote work, with uh, such, a, such, a, such a movable uh, workforce, it's very difficult to have the same environment as we have like 10 years from now, a uh, year ago. So um, I think everybody will have to focus more on products, definitely less on services, because they will not keep their employees. And uh, this will be quite a big shift in industry, in IT in general, not just in, in the data thing. And in the data, there's a lot of space right now to start something and to gain traction, because in 5 to 10, 15 years, it's going to be too late. So now this is like a good time to start. Whatever you do today will be successful. But if you want to be successful in 10, 15, 20 years, you should like to choose your battles very carefully. And we know how it's going to play out because it's always the same story. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that you actually mentioned um, uh, uh, data science projects and some kind of hot approach. Uh, you know, only once to do some analysis, some some use case. I think my message for for uh, big medium, large and medium companies who I assume are already on the data journey would be really to be persistent and if you find a good use case, really make it fully produ uh, productive, be able to run it consistently, not only once. But I think that maybe my message would go uh, more to the small companies because often I see somehow fear uh, from the small companies to even start this data journey, I think that they uh, shouldn't be uh, afraid, that it should really start. Um, I think also that, they, I mean, in the area of analytics, there is no one size 
fits all. There are solutions, there are parts, there are methodologies which are fit for small small companies. So maybe if, if in that area I see um, a potential or, uh, uh, improvement because as I said, companies are probably already on that journey. So you know, small iterative steps and you know, value, value will be, you will see value on each of the, uh, of the steps, yes. Thank you, Maya. Ms. Mila? Mm, well, I would say also, yeah, we start uh, with uh, small steps in any segment of the business. Uh, we are, I would say, already there. Uh, I mean, calling that data product or services or just uh, calling it as data, some analytical uh, tools, uh, actually, we are going in the data-driven direction. I would say the data products uh, should be treated really as any other product. So data product managers uh, should uh, understand the uh, real benefits of the product and should adjust it based on feedback, whether it's coming from customers, from uh, some internal customers, or from some alternative systems, but actually to understand that uh, this feedback loop is crucial and that the adjustment of the model is not something that uh, means that customer that product does not work, actually it's just improving the product and the and whole chain or in every company, how this product is used is also very important. So we are talking here about uh, data scientists, analysts and all the things, all the other uh, people in your um, resources that we are using in that chain, but actually we are going also to the level that maybe somebody is not even informed that he's using some data, some data product like I don't know, sales agent call center, but actually he's using it because he's using recommendations, he's using all the things that these products are uh, delivering to him, and also we should also, as data scientists or analysts, uh, understand what this end user is also telling us about, about that. And that this is some kind of chain that is changing the whole this uh, data uh, driven content. Okay, thanks, Mina. And Angela, you can have the final yeah, well, um, my message uh, to, uh, to companies would be that the power uh, on the market has permanently shifted from business uh, to customers. And um, the, the best experience uh, anywhere sets the bar for experience everywhere. Uh, what I mean is that when uh, sit in your sofa in Zagreb and you want to pay some service on the web or, or buy a product, your first tab on the browser would be, for example, Amazon Prime, your second tab would be uh, Netflix, and your third tab would be uh, Hrvatski Telekom. So uh, the competition is global. Uh, experience that you have in, on the first tab, uh, you want the same on the second and on the third. Um, so it's not easy, but I, I agree with my panelists that um, um, it, it is to jump on a, on a fast train and to go towards uh, uh, the data driven uh, okay. decisions or, or tools. Dalla, uh, Angela, Smina, Maya, I would like to thank you all once again for joining our uh, panel. I would like one big round of applause.